So you may have noticed in several of my videos on how to reduce inflammation naturally and how to reduce pandemic weight gain that one of the main things that I talk about in order to live a healthy, cleanish lifestyle is not just about food and not just about working out. It's also about getting good sleep. And now I don't always get good sleep. I'm a mom of four from ages four through 12 and they wake me up sometimes and have sick nights and I have to deal with them. I also run several businesses and have a lot of heavy duty tasks and responsibilities on my plate. So I'm not perfect at sleep. I don't think anyone is, but I've learned some strategies for how to best optimize my sleep so that when I am getting that sleep, it is restful. And I get it. I've been thinking I need to get sleep and I get on the bed and I just can't fall asleep. I can't have all these ideas racing in my head. I get woken up by the kiddos or the dogs start barking or I am too hot or too cold or I gotta pee or I'm thirsty or I need chapstick. There's all sorts of reasons that can interrupt sleep even if you're really wanting to get good sleep. If you watch my recent video on the reasons why you need good sleep, I talk about how poor sleep can lead to poor cardiovascular health, weight gain, obesity, type two diabetes, higher blood pressure, and emotional disorders like depression. So in today's video, I wanna share a little bit about how sleep works, and I also wanna share some really actionable things that you can start doing to get good sleep right away. So let's get started. First of all, let's start talking about how much sleep science says that we should be having. Well, for healthy adults, research shows that the optimal amount of hours for a healthy adult is seven hours of sleep a night. But sleeping too long can also have negative effects. So we wanna get that nice sweet spot that's about seven-ish hours. And so if you're wondering why seven, why is this magic number seven? Well, let's talk about the different stages of sleep so you can kind of understand what's going on while we're sleeping. So there's two different stages of sleep. And so as we're sleeping, our bodies actually switch between these stages in kind of a cyclical manner. Each sleep cycle lasts for about 90 minutes and a healthy, normal body will go through about four to six of these cycles during a night's sleep. And that's why we really need those seven hours is to allow for those different 90 minute cycles to take effect. And this is also why sleep disturbances cause a big ruckus in getting our good sleep. And really that's because you're interrupting those deep stages of sleep and rest and restoration. And it cuts that off in the end. You don't get to go through all of those cycles. And that REM sleep, that's that really restful sleep that lasts longer and longer as the night goes on, as you go through multiple cycles of sleep, that's really what's gonna get impacted the most because they get longer as the night goes on, but you have to work up to that. <laughs> and so if you're cutting it off each time, you never quite get to that long time of restful sleep. Now, of course, there's gonna be variations in people. Some people might be able to get through all of this in five or six hours, and some people it might take nine or 10 hours. And there's some variations for children and adolescents and seniors, but in general, I feel like, you know, as healthy adults, we wanna focus on at seven-ish hours. So now that we understand how much sleep we need to get and why, let's now talk about what regulates how and when we feel sleepy. And we're gonna use all of this information in the tips that I'm gonna share to optimize sleep. So the current thinking is that the sleep-wake system that we all have is basically divided into two processes. The circadian rhythms, which control wakefulness, and the sleep-wake homeostatic system, which controls our body's desire to sleep. And these two processes really work together because in order to have a good day of being wakeful during your circadian rhythm, you need to have a good sleep time that is controlled by your sleep-wake homeostatic systems. And one of the things that, that gets utilized is melatonin, which is a hormone that's commonly referred to as the sleep hormone. Okay, so now that we have all of that information and you understand how and why and what causes us to sleep and be awake, let's talk about how to get you better sleep. And these are all backed by science, of course. The first thing that I wanna recommend is to stick to a schedule. So having the same time that you go to sleep and the same time that you wake up every day it really helps you tune in your circadian rhythm so that your body knows exactly when it's supposed to be waking up. And also it knows when it's time to get tired for bed. This is gonna do a couple things. It's gonna make it easier to fall asleep and it's gonna make it easier to wake up. And to that point, research has shown that irregular sleep times and wake times has a negative impact on your sleep quality and all of the problems that are ensued because of it. And if you have littles or if you've raised children before, you know that it's imperative to create a nighttime Time routine and a schedule to get your child to go to bed at the same time every day to have them expect it. We are no different than babies.
babies in this way, <laughs> it's very important to focus on having a nighttime routine and that is really gonna help you set yourself up, close out that circadian rhythm and start to get sleepy. And part of that routine could just be, you know, starting to read, meditation, taking a warm bath, whatever it is you do that is part of that routine that signals to your brain and your body that it is time to shut down all of the alertness and to start getting sleepy. Another way that we can optimize falling asleep is to avoid electronics when it's getting closer to the time to go to bed. And whether it's TVs or you're scrolling on your phone, on Instagram, checking out TikTok or whatever, having the light from the screen, especially blue light that's emitted from the system is going to have an effect on your body and it's going to keep that circadian rhythm alert. And it's basically signaling to your body, this is the time to stay awake. It is not time to get tired. So if you've ever wondered why you cannot get tired while you're on Instagram late at night or while you're watching a show, you know, we're humans. We've been used to having the light outside. Then with these devices, they're going to trigger your body to stay in that circadian rhythm because it's going to think it's daytime. So turning off these devices about an hour before going to bed is basically going to trigger melatonin to get released. So the more that we can reduce all of that and start to get ready for bed, the better it's going to signal to our brain and our bodies that this is the time for sleep. And just like those lights from our devices, another thing that's going to be keeping our body from naturally preparing for sleep is all these LED lights that we have everywhere. LED lights are super powerful, very bright. So the more we can start to reduce that as it gets closer to our bedtime and reducing that blue light emission, the better it's going to be. And if you've noticed a pattern so far, it's really that we're trying to go back to nature, right? We're trying to tell our body, okay, lights are off. The sun is down. It's bedtime. To that point, getting our room that we're going to be sleeping in nice and dark and cool, just like nighttime is going to actually start to trigger our body to get tired and it's going to help us stay asleep as well. Research has shown that having even just a slight exposure of low level lights while you're sleeping can trigger your circadian response and can impact your sleep. Our physiological systems are basically trained to be alert in the presence of danger. So if a light comes on, if a noise comes on and your body is going to cut completely out of your sleep rhythm and start getting alert and awake and try to defend itself. We want to avoid that as much as possible at nighttime. And that can be accomplished in a number of ways. If you don't have the ability to turn everything off, you could get a mask to cover your eyes. You could do blackout curtains. You could turn your phone on do not disturb, which is something I learned to do a while ago. Try to minimize to your best ability all of the possible sounds and lights that could happen during the middle of the night that could interfere with your sleep. And to that point, noise pollution is another problem that is harder to avoid. If you have a partner that sleeps next to you and they snore or you have a dog who is moving around, you can get some earplugs that can just minimize your exposure to all of that noise pollution. Number five is to make sure to get in some exercise. I'm not saying you need to go do a whole hour workout um, and you need to start this whole crazy exercise routine, but research has shown that just a moderate amount of exercise during a day has a positive impact on quality of sleep. And as you know, I do daily steps. I walk about three miles in a day. If you have all of this energy from, and you're not getting it out through exercise, it's going to be more difficult to fall asleep. Another suggestion for improving your sleep that's also backed by science, and I've also done it and I know that it works, is to reduce your evening levels of caffeine. So caffeine's job is basically to stimulate your central nervous system, make you more alert and active. So the last thing you want to do is to have caffeine if you're trying to fall asleep. And so depending on when you go to bed, the research has shown that you want to identify about six hours before that time frame and have no caffeine. And that's because caffeine doesn't get out of your system for quite a long time. So by the time you're laying down to go to bed, you want to have that burn through in your body. And so you don't have to not have anything to drink at that time. You could have herbal tea that's decaffeinated that kind of helps to calm your body like chamomile and still gives you the feel of having a hot drink. Alcohol is another substance like caffeine that can disturb your sleep. And this is actually something that a lot of people find contradictory to their own feelings because you kind of feel sleepy like you want to go to sleep. So the research says that yes, maybe super tired and want to go to sleep when you're intoxicated or when you've been drinking a lot, but it doesn't allow you to get into those later stages of sleep. So you're not getting that good quality sleep. You're basically just getting the beginning part of the sleep and you don't get to go through all of those cycles, which are so important. Okay. So we got caffeine, we got alcohol. The next one, which I hope that you are reducing anyway, as part of your cleanish lifestyle is nicotine.
nicotine. We want to reduce any nicotine consumption as much as possible and especially within four hours of sleep because nicotine can have a profound impact on your sleep and not in a good way. Basically, nicotine can make it difficult to fall asleep, difficult to stay asleep, interrupt your sleep, and make you feel sleepy during the day because of it. Overall, nicotine is a no good substance in general, but it's also really not good for your sleep. Also, if you're a napper, and I totally love naps, and anytime I get a chance to, I will take a nap, but you want to avoid having long naps and focus more on a shorter duration nap, like 30 to 60 minutes. So the cool thing about naps is that research shows that having like a 30 to 60 minute nap during the day can improve your cognition, reduce your overall mortality risk, and improve your cardiovascular health. But if you have too long of a nap, you're gonna start to interrupt your circadian rhythm. And so basically you're not gonna be able to have that nice routine later on in the day because your body's gonna be all confused on what time of the day it is. And if all of these fail and you try all of these and you still struggle, there are sleep doctors that can actually help identify potential sleep disorders that you might be suffering from. There's like 80 different types of sleep disorders. There's sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, and narcolepsy, and so many of these are happening without our control. So we're not able to really fix them even if we're aware that they're happening. And so there's a lot of interventions that a sleep doctor or a sleep specialist can help you with, but you really have to take that step and go and get yourself tested. Or in rare cases, it might just be your cat is trying to kill you. So I know this is a lot of information about all the different pieces of sleep, but I hope that you come away from this video with some actionable things that you can do tonight to get started sleeping better. All right, so let me know in the comments below what steps you're gonna take today to get started improving your sleep and check out my video on how you can reduce inflammation naturally so you can keep this train going of feeling awesome and just living this cleanish lifestyle. And I will see you in the next video.